Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. Today we will be doing something a little bit different than normal, but I hope you guys will like it because today we're going to be making a tier list. We will be covering all the different dailies that an Iron Man can do in RuneScape 3 in a day and rank them from best to worst. Please note that this is 100% my opinion and based on my experience playing the game and Iron Man mode, but if you have a different opinion where something should be, throw it in the comment section below and I'd love to have a chat with you about it. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So to start off our tier list, we're going to be starting in the F tier. And the way I'm going to structure this is each tier, I'm going to give you a definition about what kind of goes through my mind when I'm categorizing these things into the tier. So starting off with the F tier, these are going to be dailies that either have been outdated by other content and are now pointless to do, or have very particular niche uses that an Iron Man shouldn't be using on a day-to-day -day basis, but rather only doing them when they need them the most. So we're going to be starting off with one of my personal favorites at the start of Iron Man, uh, fresh accounts starting in Birth Rope. We're going to be starting with the Rune Sphere, and this is going to be an F tier for the reason that it does fall off. Now. The way the rune sphere works is every about two and a half hours, it spawns in the rune span on either the high, medium, or low level, and you can siphon it much like uh, another thing that we're going to talk about shooting stars for dust. This dust, you can gather up about 250 of it and then hand it in for a prize bonus of 25,000 experience per day. Now, this is super excellent for the Iron Men who are going for a rune crafting rush to unlock Vizwax as soon as possible, because now this will give us a jump start on getting Vizwax unlocked at 50 rune crafting. 50 rune crafting is about 100,000 experience, so this gives you about a quarter of the way. So you either have a combination of doing a rune sphere on the first day and either grinding out 75,000 experience, or you could do it over the process of four days and just use this as a daily for those first four days. It takes about five minutes to siphon it for the maximum rewards, which the experience per hour of that is quite efficient. However, in the case of getting a soul rune sphere, it takes about 40 minutes for all of the layers to come off, drastically reducing the amount of experience per hour. So, in conclusion, it falls off pretty hard. Uh, it's not the best method. So do until 50, and then otherwise drop it after that. Definitely F tier. So next on the tier list, we have Shooting Stars. Now, Shooting Stars were the AFK version of mining training before the mining smithing rework, and they were really good for getting early game cosmics and astrals. However, since the update, it has been pretty rare to see people either doing shooting stars due to the lack of experience per hour relative to the main set of ores, which are pretty much required to keep up with the smithing experience uh, if you are considering maxing. However, these do have a very unique niche that I don't think a lot of people know about, and that's going to be their double ore mechanic. So basically, once you complete a shooting star and hand in 100 stardust to the little weird alien guy, He's going to give you a chance, I believe it is a 30% chance to get a double ore things over the next like 30 minutes or something. And this is actually really powerful in combination with sandstone, which I'll be talking about later, um, because it increases the amount of sandstone you can get per day as the double ore mechanic does not, in fact, count for the daily cap. And thus, when you are making those higher level invention slash archaeology tools, you're able to actually get them faster when normally you'd only be able to get uh, enough less sand to make them in about 30 days. You can actually cut it down to about 20 days if you decide to do it after a shooting star when you're grinding that. However, that is a high level thing and I wouldn't suggest doing it on a day-to-day -day basis otherwise. So definitely do if you need the early cosmic and astrals or if you are going for blessed sand, definitely do it then. Otherwise, avoid this. Next on the list is something that I feel very passionate about, and that is going to be the Prith Agility Pillars. These are the Agility Sinner Savior. They AFK on these pillars, or you can follow manually, uh, for up to 20,000 experience per day. 
but let me break it down for you. So if, you know, if you're going to be doing the agility pillars, you can, with actively participating and changing the stance, uh, you can achieve 120,000 experience per hour. Uh, and if you are completely AFK, it's 50,000 experience per hour. So what I feel particularly passionate about here is that I think that with Anachronia out and with one-click methods in Heffen, it's rather inefficient to be doing Heffen agility pillars on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you do do it, it takes about just under two years to get 99 agility from 75, which is when you can access these pillars. So I implore you, if you do do agility pillars just on a day-to-day -day basis, treating agility as a daily is 100% fine, but I would suggest either using the Heffen agility course and just doing a one-click method for X number of uh, minutes per day, or go over to Anachronia, just do a single lap. It takes about half the time to do it, and then you're done. Now, I'm kind of sad to be doing this, but I'm going to want to talk about the Book of Char next, because I really wanted to be able to give it something higher than F tier. But in terms of Iron Man and Iron Man efficiency, uh, I'm personally, I'm going to put it in F tier. And I feel like this might be a controversial topic solely because I think that there are better methods at the time that you get it. So what the Book of Char allows you to do is walk over logs and burn them uh, for about five minutes. Now, there's some really cool strategies here developed by people where you use a beast of burden, you fill it up with logs, and you dismiss it, and it drops all the logs in place, and you can walk between piles and gain really large experience per hour. There's a link to a video on screen now. The thing is, is this strategy, A, can be hard for beginners to set up slash costly because beast of burdens on Iron Men can be difficult to get by depending on whether you're using... Uh, terror birds, you know, tortoises, you probably wouldn't want to do that because, you know, it's a little bit hard to get tortoises or pack yaks, which are relatively easy to get. As well, I think that logs are better used for invention components rather than fire making because there are methods that allow you to get passive fire making experience like vires, where you can also get rewards on top of that. Not to mention all of this, it also has the requirements of having 74 fire making. 76 constitution and 64 agility which means by the time that you've unlocked book of char you've already pretty much unlocked fire so in my mind it has a very valid uh, a very valid place as a daily um not something that you would do every day but maybe if you're pushing for a level um you need that level for that quest or something 100 percent now last and definitely least in the f tier we have bork and bork is a really really old piece of content uh, that could be done as a daily that gives slayer experience charms and gems so let's uh let's break down each part of bork so the slayer experience 1k per day kind of gets outshone by reaper you can get more experience per day up to 8,000, but this requires both the hard diaries complete and the mighty fall quest complete uh, and by that time you probably have access to better slayer experience methods so it's not great for that gems uh, you can get that amount of gems from uncommon gemstones now in about 15 seconds so i would highly highly recommend you do not do this for the gems the only case that i would suggest you do bork is with the charms so you know, your desperate need for charms, you're grinding that summoning grind, 100% do Bork. Otherwise, avoid at all costs. Bottom of the F tier, absolutely the bottom of my tier list. Finally, on in the F tier, we have Arc Contracts. Now, Arc Contracts provide access to the Eastern Lands and its rewards on Waco and the other surrounding islands and uh, they give chimes. Now chimes can buy you different things like a hunter bonus experience outfit, uh, some overrides, some cool stuff, but they also can give you stuff from ports, which we're gonna be talking about later. However, the amount of time that these can take uh, can be very obnoxious. So what I'm gonna say here 
just because personally I don't do contracts very often. Uh, I'm going to put it under F tier because it has the use of either getting the hunter experience or be able to buy resources and ports, but otherwise you wouldn't really do them on a day to day basis. So next off we have the D tier and the D tier is going to be stuff that is really, really good for Iron Man in the early game. But as you progress and as you further yourself in the mid game and definitely into the late game, it starts falling off and almost becomes irrelevant to do. So starting off in the D tier, we are going to have Nemi Forest. Nemi Forest is a daily activity that is definitely a community based activity. The way that Nemi Forest was originally intended to be was that the player would solve a series of mazes and find nodes which would give experience uh, in prayer, in mining, in dungeoneering, and in farming. However, like most things in RuneScape, it has a thriving community, aka the one and only Miss April, our lord and savior. If you're watching this, I love you so much. But basically, one person will sit in that world and you can check out either the Reddit or the Discord or the friends chat to find this world of Nemi Forest. And then you can, without having to solve any of these puzzles, reap the rewards of this. Now, this is really good for early game farming and prayer experience. It allows you to get all the protection prayers early, as well as get a kickstart on that farming grind, because uh, early game farming is not great to do. However, the experience that you can gain from this, uh, depending on you know how you play, whether you're focused on particular skills or not, um, can end up teetering off. So my suggestion, or at least what I end up doing, is Nemi Forest until 43 prayer for protect from melee, and doing it to 17 farming for something else that we're going to be talking about in just a second. So definitely very useful, um, can fall off. Those are my suggestions. Do it as long as you like. Now, next on the list is my personal favorite. You know, I was making this tier list and I actually had to, I had some quite a few disagreements with uh, some of my friends about this one. Um, but we're going to be talking about beehives. Now, beehives were an update with player-owned farms that basically allowed players to feed flowers to these beehives found to the east of the manor, and you would be able to collect different types of honeycombs based on the flower that you gave them and gain some experience from it. Now, this has a very small requirement of 17 farming per day, but the experience you gain is absolutely mind-blowing. I've said it a ton of times and I'll say it again. I am absolutely in love with this daily. You know, as someone that does not enjoy doing farming in the early game or really at any point in the game, it's not really my skill. Um, I value this daily really highly and I wanted to put it so badly in the higher tiers, uh, but I definitely need to be putting this in the D tier because it does end up falling off per day. You can acquire about 15 K flat experience every 24 hours um, and it does as well give you the reward of using medicinal honey which allows you to boost the happiness of your farm animals before you sell them which actually boosts their bean value so in my opinion it's got to be the top of d tier it's i really wish i could put this higher but it's definitely d tier i want to talk about menophos next so Menophos uh, with the Scarabs and with the Obelisks are used for Menophos Reputation. So I'm just going to call this one Menophos Reputation. And well, Menophos Reputation not only unlocks quests within the area, but it also gives access to particular things within each district as well as in general. So some big unlocks that you can unlock is definitely the deposit boxes in each of the areas or the bank chests, as well as the VIP skilling area because this gives an invisible plus seven boost to all of the skills in the area so basically this speeds up uh the mining the fishing or the wood cutting of acadia trees sandstone or uh of the fish in the area the only issue i find with obelisks especially if you're a hardcore iron man is that it can be a little bit dangerous if you are going to afk uh, the scarabs can also knock you out pretty easily, but at least you have control when you're clicking on them. 
Uh, if you walk away from your computer, you're pretty destined to die on obelisks. So make sure you have tons of food if you're a hardcore Iron Man. As well, sometimes the FC is a little dead and it can be a little bit harder to find an obelisk, but most of the time that's totally okay. So definitely do for your Metafoss reputation at least up to tier 7 for the VIP skilling area or tier 9 for the quests. Now, for some of my older Iron Man players, I wanted to include this one as kind of like as a nostalgic daily that's not necessarily known as a D&D. Um, but that is going to be Arnheim. And Arnheim is in Catherby. And Arnheim sells really cheap pineapples and seaweed. And these used to be really significant because seaweed, you would melt down into soda ash for crafting experience. And with pineapples, you could put it into a compost bin for super compost. Now, as the game has evolved, the crafting meta has changed to gem mining. Uh, so seaweed is pretty pointless to buy here unless you're looking specifically to make glass items for disassembly or something like that. So I would definitely not recommend buying seaweed daily anymore. However, I would say that pineapples still do have a place in the game. Uh, super compost, especially if you're farming herbs, uh, has a very significant impact on your herb gain. So I would definitely say do your uh, do pineapples until 83 magic when you can unlock fertile soil on the lunar spellbook. And then you could use that as your main source for super compost rather than having to make it on a day by day basis. Now, next, we're going to be talking about a very particular one that I feel like a lot of Iron Man aware about and definitely do on a day by day basis. And this is going to be Big Chin. Uh, Big Chin Champa is offered in the Gnome Stronghold, and basically what you do is you run around and you gather moths and you feed it to this Chin Champa for hunter experience. Now you can do it twice a day, and it is definitely the best early game hunter experience that you can get. It does tend to fall off around 50 plus, and I've linked a, as with everything, I'm going to be linking all of my references in the description below, so please give that a look for all of the information that I'm getting on this. But basically, it can get pretty mundane quickly uh, as someone who you know has done uh, a lot of Big Chin uh, on three different Iron Man accounts. I would, can definitely say that you will get pretty bored of it quickly. My personal strategy would be to go from till 59 and then start doing Red Salamanders into Black Salamanders. And then eventually you'll be able to unlock Big Game Hunter. So definitely do Big Chin until at least 50, 59, or 75. The rewards for Big Game Hunter are kind of unique, so it gives you access to private hunter areas. Uh, however, due to updates, you know, Gren Walls can be done on Anacronia now. Uh, Red Chins are, I find personally, are better in the wild, actually, than in the private hunter area. Um, so there are, there are niche rewards like Swamp Tar that you can be using for Salamander ammo. Overall, it's really good, and I would highly recommend because Hunter is a very slow skill to start off with. So definitely high D tier. So next we have the C tier, and the C tier is going to be stuff that we do for resources, but aren't great for much else. So this is going to be great for like gathering resources for herb lore or something like that, um, or construction. But otherwise, it's really just that. Um, so these ones are okay, but not great. So starting off, we have our Achievement Diary dailies. You can collect a certain number of items from people across Galenor for completing these diaries. Now, on screen, I've listed all the different kinds of rewards that you can get on a day-to-day -day basis from the different diaries. However, the ones in yellow are the ones that I would suggest doing on a day-by-day -day basis and are definitely worth for upkeeping your account definitely in the C tier. So slightly better than our daily challenges, we are going to be putting our divine locations. Now divine locations give both experience and resources. I am fully aware of this, but I would have to say that they are in the C tier due to the fact that you have to put in resources to get them back. Now this can give some great training experience, especially in woodcutting and fishing. Um, but it is great to do if you need uh, raw fish for cooking or, uh, or herbs because, you know, Iron Men need every herb they can get for herb lore. 
So I'm definitely going to put it a little bit higher just because you get to select which resource you want to get on a day-by-day -day basis, whatever. It's kind of flexible into what you need. You can upgrade them in the Hall of Memories from creating one divine location per day to three, um, uh, which definitely allows you to hit your resource cap. But there is that energy upkeep as well. So if you don't do a lot of divination, this isn't one that you're going to hate missing, but I definitely would suggest it if you need a particular resource. Now, in between this, I want to talk about Wicked Hood. Now, Wicked Hood is something that you can get for free in Birth Rope from Tom, Tommy McGrubber, Tom McGrubber, Tom McGrubber. And basically, it allows you to A, teleport to an altar, B, get ruins of a particular type, and C, pull ruins from it to be used at an altar. This can be very beneficial if you're running low on a particular rune. You can teleport to an altar, pull out the essence, and use it. But what I see it particularly good for is doing a combination rune run. So especially for mud runes, which is needed for herb lore, uh, I like to use my Wicked Hood uh, in for that on a day-by-day -day basis, and that allows me to kind of keep up with my herb lore needs. You could also technically do it for astrals, for natures, you know. Uh, it really depends on what you need, whatever it is. I'm going to put it in the middle of C tier because due to its flexibility, I think that it's really useful uh, as an item as well as allows you to kind of passively train runecrafting on a day-by-day -day basis. So definitely middle of C tier. And our last one for the C tier is going to be Aquariums. Now, Aquariums is a technically a mixture of a weekly and a daily. The daily part of it is going to be the kelp as well as the gems. There are oysters that when you open them, give you a gem. There is a very low chance at an onyx, but there is still that chance for an onyx, as well as being able to use kelp to make high tier food that can be useful in very unique situations. The weekly, where you can get the free teak or mahogany logs, as well as a free sealed elite clue scroll on a week by week basis, is definitely bumps this up a little bit, but we're not considering that in this. This is solely based on the onyx chance, as well as the fact that you can get kelp. This is definitely a good daily to do if you want a chance at an onyx and you don't want to do something like the fight kiln or gullible tourist or something. Uh, and definitely can add up to your gem count over the dime. But otherwise, as I said before with Bork, you know, you can definitely get those gems faster in just mining an Alcarid. So I would definitely say do this for the Onyx, do this for the Kelp, and definitely do this as a weekly. But in terms of a daily, the middle of C tier. Alrighty, so we're approaching the top half of our tier list. So we're going to be starting off with the B tier, and the B tier is going to be something that's really good throughout the mid game. Now, you might not have access to some of these in the early game, but if you do, it's also really good for the early game as well. But these stay consistent throughout the mid game. So starting off, we are going to have to give it to Jack of Trades. Now, Jack of Trades is definitely not a unknown daily. Uh, it's a thing that you can buy with loyalty points right off the bat, especially if you get the Premier. Um, if you're ever thinking about starting an Iron Man, I would highly suggest getting Premier Clubs so you can have access to this uh, aura right away. But basically what it allows you to do is train X number of skills per day, and it gives you a XP lamp in return for doing that. Now, the really neat thing about Jack of Trades is it can be reset not once, but twice per day, depending on what you have on your account. So if you have Premier Club, you can reset it once with the uh, artifact, Premier Artifact, with the aura reset. But also, if you want to, you can use Vizwax on a daily basis. I believe it's 20 Vizwax. And you can use Jack of Trades three times per day in the skills that are slowest on Iron Man, whether you hate agility or you need that herb lore experience, highly recommend getting this definitely if you don't have premiere that's totally okay it's not required to play the game however as soon as you get the 15,000 uh points loyalty points for jack of trades i would highly recommend you emphasize this as well as do it on a day-by-day -day basis it can make your herb lore grind in the early game and mid game very easy as well as do put it into skills that maybe you don't enjoy as much and allow you to play the game that the way you want to play it. 
Next up, we're going to be talking about something that I don't think a lot of people would consider a daily, but it in fact is, which is going to be God Wars 2 Bounties. So basically, if you don't know, God Wars 2 Reputation is a lot like Metaphos, where as you progress, you get increasing rewards, and in God Wars 2 case, it actually increases the rate at which uniques are dropped at the four different bosses, depending on who you have reputation with. So basically how it works is you go to this guy, he gives you a contract uh, to kill X number of minions of that particular faction. You go and kill them, which also increases your faction kill count, which is very convenient for when you want to actually do God Wars 2 bossing. And then he'll give you a certain amount of reputation per day. Uh, these contracts stack up to five in a row, but you do only get one per day. So this can always be treated as a weekly, but technically it is more of a daily. Something that I don't think a lot of people know about the contracts is it only takes about 30 days to max out reputation at a particular boss. So say you're really, really striving to get that Dragon Rider Lance as soon as possible. You can do this for a month before, prep up, and basically change that drop rate from a 1 in 512 to a 1 in 256, which definitely cuts back on it. Or if you are going for high level PVM perks, you're definitely going to need to be, have a lot of Dragon Rider Lances to disassemble, so they're very useful for that. This is definitely a daily that has a cap on it because eventually you'll run out of reputation to gain, um, or you'll start doing the bosses and you'll have boss seals to hand in for reputation. But I would highly recommend if you're going to camp one of the particular bosses, whether it be Hellweir, whether it be Vindicta, whether it be Twin Furies for whatever reason, I would suggest doing contracts and at least getting one of them up to max reputation and then proceed to do the rest of them. Finally, we are going to have the Animal Trapper. And the Animal Trapper, I'm going to put at the top of the B tier solely for its convenience. So basically how Animal Trapper works is three times per day, you can hire someone named Adam to go out and forage an animal for you. Now, there is a high chance of you getting a very common animal, but there is a chance that you can get that you can get a rarer animal, which can be a lot more difficult to get. Specifically, I'm talking about chinchampas and yaks. This basically stops you from having to catch about close to 3,000 chinchampas, or it stops you from having to kill about 3,000 yaks. Now, you can get yaks through spirit pouches, which can be a little bit easier, but I'm talking about specifically in the mid-game when you don't have 96 summoning. So this is going to be a purely a convenience daily. You definitely don't have to do it to do player-owned farms, but if you do want those chinchampas, you have an, one of those animals, but you have either the same gender or you only have one of them, definitely do this guy. It uh, can be very useful to keep your account progressing. We're trickling down to the top nine dailies that we have left over here. Uh, so we're going to be going into the A tier next. And A tier is going to be something that you want to do on a day-by-day -day basis in RuneScape. I think each one of these is definitely has its place in the game. It's definitely something that, you know, if you have the time for, if you know you're okay with a little bit of daily scape, I think it's worth putting in the time, effort, and money into these because these are going to either help you keep your account progressing or are going to be very useful for either high-end PVM or are just going to be a great experience method throughout the entire game. Now, you might notice that I have a tree here, and this one is going to be evil trees. I preach very, very highly of evil trees, um, especially on Iron Man. If you haven't seen it in my last video, I explained all the math behind evil trees and why it's so useful. But basically to give you guys a breakdown, it is the best experience in game from one to 99 per hour. These trees spawn across Gilinor and uh, you fight them by chopping them down and burning them and then get a reward of auto banking logs as well as some logs, seeds, and maybe a bird nest or two. Now the really useful thing about these is the experience, but also the auto bank log feature because it gives you flexibility. It allows you to go and bank construction experience through teak logs or fire making, fletching, or invention components with Acadias. Now these are both very viable methods, but I personally use them for teak logs because I really want to get construction done. That's why it's going to be in the A tier. It's got the best experience, 1 to 99. It's got some sick rewards with it. And there's a great FC, Evil Tree FC, 
that allows people to gain easy access to them. Triple thumbs up. Now I know what you're thinking. Andrew, I get my teak logs from Bandaging Miscellanea. Why would I ever use evil trees to get them? And you are right, random person. Managing Miscellanea is better than evil trees. And it's passive. It only requires 50 to 75k per day, which, to be honest, now on an Iron Man is very easy to get on a day-by-day -day basis. You can choose to either get it in herbs, in teak or mahogany logs, you get maple for invention components. This has the flexibility of giving you the resources you need, and you should be doing this as soon as you unlock it, till the day you die. If you don't manage to do this one on a day-by-day, -day, that's totally okay. All you have to do on a day-by-day -day basis or every other day is just quickly go to Miscellanea, chop down a few trees, and then go on with your day. You can save all of your collection for one big day when you get that giant rush of dopamine when you see that you have 100,000 maple logs in the inventory, and you can bank them as such. Divination. You all dislike it, and you all do this on a day-by-day -day basis, oh my god, it's Divine Caches, our holy light of the world. Uh, divine Caches are definitely the best method of experience in the game per hour for divination. Even with the update, I think it's still very useful to be doing this on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, you can either get to 70, 80, 95, or 99, and basically 70 is for the Hall of Memories, 80 is for Invention, 95 is going to be incandescent memories for divine charges, and then 99 is obviously for skill mastery. I really don't have to put much explanation into this one. Definitely top of A tier. These next two that we're going to be talking about are very important for PBM, and these are going to be flasks and ports. Now, flasks are going to be higher than miscellanea, and these are a great quality of life item. They do have some higher requirements to access. However, it does allow you to stay longer at bosses, it frees up inventory spots, or it allows you to make combination potions for higher level herb lore training. It is basically a requirement if you want to go beyond 99 herb lore for that 120 cape, and is a requirement for accessing combination overloads, specifically elder overloads. Now, I talked previously about this one when I was discussing shooting stars, but basically how it works is you mine some sandstone, you process that sandstone, and then you blow the glass into the flasks. Sandstone could be used for a lot of high-level invention devices now, um, and it isn't just used for flasks. So I think that's why it's higher than miscellanea and evil tree, because basically it allows you to not only access skilling items, but as well as combat items. Which brings us on to the next one, which is going to be ports. Now, ports is going to be a little bit higher because ports gives us access to our best in slot for the pocket slot, which are going to be scrimshaws. Now, scrimshaws, if you don't know, are basically auras that have been put into a pocket slot item that you can activate, which basically allows you to have two auras active at once. These can be very useful for bossing and basically are required for some high-level bossing, but just in general can be really useful to have. Ports also gives you access to a tier 88 offhand, as well as makes Hone 6 easier to access for some skillers through silent components. Now, ports is pretty low management in my opinion. Uh, you teleport to ports one to five times per day, and you just quickly manage some ships and then go about doing your day. It doesn't take a very long time to do the actual daily, but it does involve quite a bit of strategy if you want to do it efficiently, so there is a guide in the description below that I've referenced when I use it. Ports does require 90 in a skill, which can be a high requirement for some players, so once you get that and start doing ports on a day-by-day -day basis for some nice easy PBM benefits. Finally, in the A tier, we have our shop runs. Now, I know no Iron Man is without their shop runs because there are so many materials that are required for you to access or that just make it so much easier to play the game if you do these shop runs. These are going to include ruins, herb lore supplies, broad arrows. Now, Pyrodex, if you click on the link here, has a really good guide for daily shop runs. Uh, it's a little outdated, but it does tend to hold up. 
but it does help you get on your feet for the different dailies that you want to do on a day by day basis and allows you to create your own schedule for what you want to buy on a day by day basis during your daily shop runs. Big shout out to Pyrodex for creating this guide. Uh, love your videos, man. Holy cow, we made it to the S tier. All right, so there is only three things left. We've got Bizwax, Traveling Merchant, and Soul Reaper. And we're going to be doing it from worst to best. Going to be starting off with Soul Reaper. By no means is this a bad daily. This is actually one of my favorite dailies to do because it encourages you not only to do bossing, but to try new bosses that maybe you haven't done yet. Basically, Soul Reaper is when Death assigns you bosses to kill a certain amount, and in reward, he gives you Reaper points, which is basically is an enhanced Slayer of Points rewards, which allow you access to some pretty awesome rewards. Now, point number one. This is great for early game Slayer experience. You can access Soul Reaper after 60 combat, and as you progress in combat levels, the amount of bosses and the types of bosses you can do diversify. Now, point number two with Soul Reaper is going to be you get a free teleport to them. If you have done any bossing before up to 10 kills, you unlock War's Retreat teleport. And basically, in War's Retreat, there is a Reaper teleport, and that's going to allow you to teleport to the location, which made ease of access really simple. Especially for something like Dagonoth Kings, where you would have to travel through Waterbirth Island, which is actually locked by a quest. With the Reaper Portal, you do not have to do this, and in fact can just teleport to it. Once you have a kill in that boss, you can attune another portal to that specific boss, if you want to do it further from that point on. And the, and the ultimate reward from this daily is gotta be the Hydrix. Hydrixes are best in slot jewelry. Uh, for both the for the necklace, the bracelet, and the ring slot, they can be used to make some very OP high tier PVM gear, but also can be needed for maintaining that gear. So it's really important uh, that if you're doing the high tier PVM, you probably already know that doing your daily reaper is very important. But it can also be really good for a low level Iron Man to get a necklace of the reaper or a amulet of souls quite early into their account, which gives significant stat boosts as well as some additional healing or accuracy, which could be vital for accessing a higher tier boss later on in the game. Now, I do want to make a note here that you can go into the settings and enable group bosses as well as double the length of the tasks that he assigns you for about 50% more of the points. So that's going to make it a lot easier to farm the points on a day-by-day -day basis and either to get that first Hydrix early or to manage the ones that you currently have now. In second place on our tier list is going to be Traveling Merchant. Traveling Merchant isn't necessarily the most popular because of its expense, but it is definitely a must-do if you have the capital to spare. The Traveling Merchant stock enhances the rest of your game experience for certain areas of the game that maybe you don't like doing as much and can instead go to this shop on a day-by-day -day basis. And if there's something you like, you can purchase it, albeit for a high cost. These items include the Uncharted Map for a Tavia's Rod Chance, uh, the Anima Crystal for God Wars 2 Rep, Slayer VIP tickets, D&D tokens, Gift of the Reaper for some Reaper points, a Livid Plant, this one's very keen in my heart, especially if you're going for comp, very important, Shattered Anima, Death Touch Dart, and a Dragonkin Lamp for some easy experience. And the last spot on our tier list is going to go to Vizwax. Vizwax, as you all know, is one of the most versatile rewards that you can get from a daily. Not only can it refresh auras or extend them, which is huge for PBM, you can also extend daily challenges slash reroll them if you don't want. So you can either double the experience and double the games, baby. Or you can use it for quick teleports. Say you're doing clues, you don't want to wait around for teleports, and maybe there's something that you can't teleport to runes with, like Ooglog or something like that. Then that can be very useful for quickly getting around. Great quality of life. Finally, 
you can use it to extend how much resource how many resources you get from find location uh which is not necessarily the best reward from it but it is definitely a benefit for having it there anyways so this has been my tier list give it a comment below whether you agree or disagree with some of my things remember to like and sub if you enjoy this type of video wait where is that music coming from